While messing around with electronics today, I'm going to be enjoying a Red Alert Red Ale from Full Geek Brew Lab in Winnipeg. Not a lot in the way of tasting notes on here. They call it Smooth and Malty Red Ale. The only slightly unusual ingredient in it is honey. Hmm. And it has a lot of Star Trek references on it. Okay. That's not bad. It's maltier than the color of it would indicate. I like it. So today I am going to be playing with this little telephone module that I got in a recent mailbag. This is designed to go inside uh, telephone interface equipment and it basically generates all of the signaling that you would need to control the phone and it allows the phone to send back appropriate signals to whatever your device you got it connected to. What got me the most interested is that it only needs a 5 volt input. Um, some of them say 3.3, some of them say 5 volts. Uh, but regardless, it only needs that kind of a input to generate all the voltages needed and a telephone to operate properly. That kind of telephone, not a cell phone. A telephone to operate properly needs a couple of higher voltages. It needs 48 volts, current limited, to go onto the line to operate the phone itself. And then it also needs to be able to generate a, I believe it's 90 volts, 20-ish hertz signal to cause the thing to ring, to cause the phone to ring. It also needs to detect when the phone's been picked up or taken off hook. And I believe that's the major things. Oh, and of course it needs to extract the audio. So a typical phone connection, this is the RJ11 jack that is common in North America. I'm not quite sure what the rest of the world used uh, for this, but this is the jack that is here. It looks like the smaller version of the RJ45 that we use for ethernet now. Anyway, it's um, typically a four wire connection, but only two of them are used. And those two are referred to as the tip and ring. Uh, traditionally, again, in North America, they are a red and green uh, cable pair. Although if you're using uh, Cat5 wiring for it, you'll use pair number one, which is the blue white. That aside, that one pair of wires carries voltage to operate the phone. It carries a bunch of signaling and it carries audio in two different directions. So that audio function is the last function that this thing does. It extracts the transmit and receive audio without causing feedback, without causing them to interfere with each other. The phones themselves typically put a little bit of the microphone audio back into the speaker just so that you know that it's working, so you can sort of hear yourself, but it's at a much lower level than the incoming voice from whoever you're talking to. So what I want to do with this guy is something that I see an awful lot of theater people and stagehands asking about over the years, like over the past you know 30 plus years that I've been doing electronics. And that is causing a prop telephone to ring, to actually ring on the stage. So this, I think, is a good inexpensive way to do it without having to create big power supplies or anything uh, to create that higher voltage. And as a bonus, I'm going to try and get the audio in and out of it so that you can cue your actors or you can add your actor's uh, telephone filtered sound to the mix that's going into your show. Don't know how it's going to work out, but we'll give it a shot. I'll just toss this guy onto a breadboard. I think I'll do it that way. Oh, those pins aren't long enough to engage with a breadboard. Well, that's an inconvenience. And they don't really go deep enough into pin header to work either. Well, hmm. So I ran out to my truck and grabbed my uh, wire wrapping tool. Let's see if I can just wire wrap onto these because that would solve the problem too. I mean, ultimately, when I put this into a real uh, circuit board, assuming it works, then I will solder it down to a board. But I want to be able to tinker with it first and I want something portable. So I'll just see if I can actually wear up onto this. That worked. A little bit of a tail on there. Just going to cut the wire too long. So I wire up for T1 connections at work quite frequently. 
I mean, yeah, we don't use a lot of T1 these days, but this is still a very common. Uh oh, is that not going to go in there? Right. Well, that's problematic. No, looks like I can only get onto the end pins. Well, I guess that's a start. I can just do it the kind of crappy way. It doesn't work as well because, of course, you don't get the pressure on the pins, but it will work for experimenting. Like I said, if I turn this into a real thing, then I can solder it down, but I don't want to have to solder it down to a piece of perf board temporarily and then unsolder it just to put it into something permanent. So this will do for now. Right then, so it was a bit of a pain in the ass using the pliers, but I was able to get the wires that I need wrapped on there. So I have the tip and ring there. I have the ringer signal coming in here, and that needs to be 20 hertz, up to 25 hertz, um, but just at a 5 volt level, because this thing will boost it up to the level needed to send down the line. Then I have the audio in and out here, and I have a 5 volts in the ground here. Um, there are other pins that you can use for different things. Uh, this one is a ringing mode, and it sets some bias voltages, but I don't think I need it. If it if I do, I'll connect it. This one tells you if the phone is on hook or off hook. For this application, I don't think I need it. This one is an optional audio uh, ground, I think, or power. It's called analog supply voltage just for filtering and i don't think i need it and then this one at the far end here uh, is a power down so if you set that uh, to a binary zero it will shut this module down put it into a low power state so anyway this should be enough just to make a phone work not to actually ring or anything but just to work so if i power this on with five volts through the breadboard into this then I should have a little bit of uh, power here and actually it's enough to power up the DTMF circuit and actually make noises so that's pretty cool and when I speak into the microphone I can hear it coming a little bit out there so that part works and let's just grab a voltmeter quickly so our voltage here should be about 48 volts 47.0, close enough. And then when we go off hook, it should drop because that puts a load on it. Yeah, about 6 volts, 7 volts. That's reasonable enough. Um, this is putting a, I want to say 20 milliamp load, but I could be wrong, onto there. So that's reasonable. It's basically a 600 ohm impedance is what this presents to the line. So next... I guess let's see if we can get this thing ringing and for that we need an external 20 Hertz uh, source now you could do what my buddy gadget reboot is doing with this same module and you could use a microcontroller to generate that 20 Hertz signal and a bunch of other signals but I'm gonna go a little bit old school and I'm gonna use a 555 so let me just build up a 20 hertz oscillator on the breadboard with a 555 and we'll be back all right one quick 555 circuit later um, the two resistors are 680 the capacitor what did i calculate that as being capacitor is 33 microfarads and as you can see it's pretty much bang on 20 hertz nice little square wave yeah, it's not a perfect 50% duty cycle, but I don't think that matters. And just for fun, I've added a little LED in here just to make sure that it's actually working just so I can see it. So I'll put that ringer input signal on pin 3 of the 555. Get some power and ground on there. This phone's still plugged in, so now if we turn it on... 
The phone rings. Excellent. Well, that one's got a digital ringer in it. Um, let's try it with the old school phone that's got an actual physical bell in it. He's got enough jam for that. Yes, it does. Awesome. Okay, we're one step closer. Um, what else do we need? I guess we just need to get the audio in and out of it now. And that is why I ordered these transformers. These are just a one-to-one -one ratio. They are 600 ohms on each side, audio transformers. And I'm doing that for a couple of reasons. One, DC block between this circuit and my audio console or whatever I'm hooking it up to. And two, uh, just to create a balanced circuit because this coming out of here is an unbalanced circuit. It's reference to ground. And I would like for longer distance transmission on a microphone cable or something to have balanced audio. So I'll use a couple of those, one going in and one going out. Okay, there is the two transformers added. I don't have anything on the secondary side or primary side. On the other side, uh, yet. Just want to connect this up. Oh, and I've also added a push button between the ringing signal input and the 555. So we can control that a little bit smoother. So now then, if I hook up the ground to those transformers, that's not working anymore. Oh. Okay. On the data sheet, it says that the audio in and out should be connected through a 100 nanofarad capacitor. I'm assuming that's just to act as a DC block. Here's the demo circuit that they have in there, and it shows a DC block cap in there already. So I think we'll probably go with that. So we'll just put those capacitors in there, move that over there and then we'll see what happens interesting so it doesn't like having a dc path to ground through the transformer okay so uh, we're still disconnected so that still works connect that to there that still works yeah that still works okay um, so now I guess we can put something onto these two guys. Which one is which? So for the eventual version of this one, I actually put it in a box and package it up. I'm going to put XLR connectors for the in and out. But just for now, because my audio interface has a balanced quarter inch plug as its input, uh, balanced, again, having you know, the same signal on both of the pins. It uses, for quarter-inch balance, it uses the same thing that most people call a stereo plug. So uh, tip and ring are going to be your balance pair, and then ground is ground. So I am just going to wire that up right now and connect that to my audio interface, and hopefully we can get sound in and out of my computer. Okay, this is not ideal because this isn't shielded cable and this is a really noisy audio environment, but as you can hear, there's actually audio coming through the thing. I say, hope you can hear, I've got it mixed in from, uh, from my recording interface. And yes, there's a lot of hum. You can also hear the tones. So that's cool. If I finally put this into a project enclosure, I'm going to have to shield it. I may have to wrap some of my copper foil shielding tape. Where is it? I've got it around here somewhere. I can't find it right now. Anyway, I'll have to put some of that around the transformer, probably. Hmm, maybe. Let's try it with a smoother power supply. Maybe that'll sound better. And what's a smoother power supply than a battery? There's going to be no ripple on that. Let's plug that in over there. And some, posit and some positive in over there. And if we speak into the phone through the recording interface, that, I think, sounds a lot better. So 
So that's a win. Um, so I just need to not use a digital power supply. I need to use a power supply with an analog regulator. Okay, I can add that into this again when I when I finally decide to put this in a project box. You may be getting the distinct impression that I'm not going to put this into a project box today and make it a final product. And you'd be right. So the only other thing to try with this little module is to move the audio connection to the input and move it to an output of my audio interface for the computer. And then we'll see if we can send audio through this. I hope you heard that. Um, I could hear it in the room. So I, I just found a website with recordings of that, you know. But I think this thing does everything that I wanted it to do. So that is excellent. Um, yeah, I, as I said, I may eventually package this up into something. But for now, I'm just going to leave it where it is because... I know I can throw it together quickly if I get a request from somebody that I know in the theater community that actually wants to have a live phone that they can control on the stage. So after recording all of that, I started messing around a little bit more, which I should have done before, but I didn't. Uh, so right now, I have just the battery, you know, 4 volts, 3 point whatever volts, connected to the module and the module connected to the phone to this phone here and i guess the audio is still connected but it's not really going anywhere um, so then i connected this wire to the uh, other ringing control wire not the external 20 hertz in that's this one if i just give that power So I didn't even need to build this 555 circuit. I can just signal it from there. Well, that just made it infinitely easier. And of course, you know, that, that was just creating that 20 hertz. So I don't need this guy at all. And I can just use that. Where's my push button? Well, does that work with the other one too? Where is this guy here? Yeah, wow. And now it's battery powered too. And it doesn't need to... Okay. Well, that makes it infinitely easier. Okay, uh, this time is the end for real. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. And maybe next time I'll be a little bit more prepared. No, probably not.